words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. So two things to say at the start. First, um, Amy and I just got back from Scotland a few days ago. So I haven't had a chance to memorize this sermon. So it's not that there's something up my sleeve, it's that there's something in my hand. Just to make sure I stay on track. The other thing is that if you've been worshiping here long enough, you'll know that at the baptism of someone who is not a tiny wee baby, or at confirmation, I often preach to that person rather than to everyone, so that everyone here and online gets to eavesdrop on this conversation. Well, Sam, you're it. So this is for you, and they get to listen, because, spoiler alert, it's for them as well. But this is a slightly shorter version of the sermon. So if you want to hear it in its entirety, come back three years from now. And when this comes up in the lecture cycle again, you'll hear the whole sermon. But by popular demand, the congregation wants to go home sometime today. So here's the truncated version. Sam, this is a great text to have at your baptism. It wasn't arranged for your baptism. It comes up in the lectionary cycle, but it's a good one because it has a lot to teach us. And I want to suggest to you today, it has a lot to teach you. Notice at the start, Jesus has gone from them. We've had the feeding of the 5,000, all sorts of things have happened, and they look around and he's not there. And what do those people do? They don't sit there bewailing, well, where is Jesus gone? He was here a minute ago, now he's scarpered off. What they do, the text tells us, is that they get in the boat and they go after him. A lot of things happen in boats in the gospel. The one where Jesus walks on the water and Peter walks on the water for a while as well. I love that story too because it produced one of the, the best names of any book I've ever heard. And the name of the book was, if you want to walk on the water, you've got to get out of the boat. Well, if you want to go see Jesus, sometimes you've got to get in the boat. And the boat can be a metaphor for the church or a boat can just show that God wants us to seek God out. This doesn't have to be passive. Your, your faith life, your relationship with God in Christ Jesus doesn't have to be passive. You don't just have to say, well, here I am. Seek me out and find me. If something is worth having, it's worth going out and getting. And there is nothing in life worth getting more than Jesus Christ and him crucified and him raised from the dead. Sometimes, Sam, you just got to get in the boat. And remember too, if you want to walk on water, sometimes you got to get out of the boat. And as soon as they find Jesus, they start asking him questions. Sam, never stop asking questions. Questions in life, about life, and questions to God about God. Again, this is, faith isn't a spectator sport. It's a participatory sport. Ask the tough questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question. There are some stupid answers, but there's no such thing as a stupid question. Ask. The very name Israel, which was given to Jacob, I'm no longer going to call you Jacob, your name now is Israel, means one who wrestles with God. Sam, spend the rest of your life wrestling with God. Don't take anything on face value. Don't accept anything that someone tells you which is fast followed by the words, because I said so. Nothing ever good comes from believing someone who says to you, because I said so. Wrestle with God. Jacob did it. Israel does it. People for whom faith is important do it every day. Spend the rest of your life wrestling with God by asking the tough questions and never being satisfied with easy superficial answers. It becomes clear 
almost immediately that the, the group looking for Jesus have, have not got it all together. And, and we can easily say, ah, see, they're wrong. Jesus tells them they're wrong. You come to me, Jesus says, not because you believe the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. And that sounds as if Jesus is saying, you're wrong, get out of here. But he's not. Sam, you have to discover in life that it's not about being right or wrong. Sometimes you just have insufficient information. Sometimes the picture you have and the knowledge you have isn't wrong, it's just incomplete. Learn the difference between being just flat out wrong versus simply having an incomplete understanding. And don't ever be despondent about that incomplete understanding because you're in really good company. Because none of us know it all. And none of us have it all together. All of us live a life that is insufficient or incomplete in our understanding. Rejoice in that. And then continue to ask the tough questions. But remember... It's not wrong. It might simply be insufficient or incomplete. Then they ask to be fed. And they're thinking bread like Moses provided in the wilderness. Jesus points out, yeah. Moses fed the people in the wilderness and they lived for a while. But spoiler alert, Jesus says, Moses is dead. Learn what's authentic and what's inauthentic. Learn what true bread is versus fake bread. There's a lot of things in life that look and sound and taste like the real thing. This is not an advert for Coca-Cola. Oh, come on, that wasn't that bad. I, I know it wasn't great, but that was a stony silence. Come on, even Kevin didn't laugh. And he laughs at everything. A lot of things in life are counterfeit, which means they're close to being real. They, they look so similar to the real thing. Asking tough questions, wrestling with God, and knowing that what you know may simply be incomplete or insufficient in the moment will lead you to discern real from fake, true from counterfeit. That's true about faith, it's true about love, it's true about relationship, it's true about commitment, it's true about everything. Be discerning, Sam. Don't settle for face value. It may be fake. Never be afraid to dive deeper. In conclusion, all the stories about Jesus over the last few weeks have been about Jesus feeding people himself by his own hand that he provides. Jesus feeds them himself. And we discover that eternal life, authentic life, true life, not counterfeit, but the real thing, comes when we allow Jesus to feed us himself. You hear the difference between the two? Jesus feeds us himself. Jesus feeds us himself. When Jesus feeds you his very self, that's love and life and truth and joy, which is complete and real and everlasting. You have the rest of your life to go find it. It is a glorious treasure you seek. And it's not that difficult to find because it's not a game of hide and seek. It's a relationship in which Jesus is just ready to give himself to you. Allow him to. 
That's all I've got for you today except to say thank you for trusting me with your faith journey so far. I hope I get to journey with you for years to come, as do all of these folks. But remember where this started. I hope this is your home. And I hope here you find life and joy and love and peace. Amen.